Virgil Abloh is an artist, architect, and fashion designer who has risen to the absolute heights of fashion and design, literally. Within the span of several years, Abloh went from selling screen-printed Champions gear and Ralph Lauren rugby's with the moniker Pyrex 23 screen-printed on them to becoming the first African-American artistic director at the world's largest fashion house, Louis Vuitton. Virgil's success wasn't necessarily handed to him, although it may seem like that at times. Virgil traveled a long road and knocked down many barriers before he gained commercial success. We wanted to take a closer look at Virgil's entire career and dissect his early inspiration, the different steps he took along his career, and what catapulted him into stardom as a modern day renaissance man. Virgil Abloh was born on September 30th, 1980 in Rockford, Illinois to immigrant parents from Ghana. His mother was a seamstress and his father managed a paint company. While being raised in Rockford, Abloh attended Boylan Catholic High School, which he graduated from in 1998. Growing up, Abloh was heavily inspired by graffiti, soccer, skateboarding, hip-hop music, and his biggest inspiration was Michael Jordan. As a kid, Virgil and his friends would draw concept sneakers for Nike and send them to the company's headquarters in hopes of landing a shoe deal. The brand never replied. Who knew what was to come? As a teenager, Abloh began DJing and was known for DJing house parties in high school and college. Abloh attended college at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, receiving his undergraduate in civil engineering in 2002. It was around this time he brought a t-shirt design to a local print shop to be printed. Allegedly, the design was formatted so perfectly that they just needed to hit print. Because of his skills, the store offered him a job on the spot. A few weeks later, Don C., Kanye West's colleague, visited the shop looking for designers, where he met Virgil. Soon after, Don C. would introduce Kanye and Virgil. Abloh would continue his schooling and go on to receive his master's degree in architecture from the Illinois Institute of Technology in 2006. Soon after graduating, Abloh was appointed as Ye's personal creative director. In 2009, Kanye and Virgil interned together at Fendi as the rapper's interest in high fashion was beginning to peak. Surprisingly, Ye and Virgil were treated like any other intern. This meant they worked the typical 9 to 5, got their supervisor's coffee, and even made photocopies. The duo was reportedly only paid $500 a month for their work. Louis Vuitton CEO Michael Berg, who they were interning for, said in an interview for the New York Times, I was really impressed with how Ablo and West brought a whole new vibe to the studio and were disruptive in the best way. It was around this time in 2009 when Kanye, Virgil, Don C, Taz Arnold, and a few others would break necks at Paris Fashion Week. When the notorious photo of the crew was taken by Tommy Tun outside of the Combe des Garçons show. This was the first fashion week both Virgil and Kanye had attended, and their interest in fashion changed from spectators to competitors within the industry. As Virgil rose to higher notoriety for being associated with Kanye, later in 2009 he and Don C launched a retail store called the RSVP Gallery, located in Chicago. Their founded retail space became widely known for carrying a mixture of trendy fashion apparel and for its appreciation of Virgil's style on his interior design for the store. On January 5th, 2012, Ye announced a new initiative called Donda, named after his late mother. Donda would act as Kanye's creative agency, which served to execute ideas in the fields of design, art, fashion, music, and filmmaking. Virgil was arguably the most prominent member of the agency, and was listed as Donda's creative director. It is rumored that people would often joke that Donda was just Virgil's laptop. While at Donda, Virgil was appointed the artistic director of Jay-Z and Kanye's Watch the Throne album, where he and then creative director of Gavinci, Ricardo Tisi, would collaborate, later earning them a Grammy nomination for Best Album Packaging. Virgil went on and finally took the next step, and in 2012 launched his first clothing endeavor, Pyrex Vision. The name was inspired by the Pusha T verse. Pyrex stirs turned into Cavalli furs, the full lame cat when I waved the kitty purrs. Starting with Champions Gear hoodies and gym shorts, Abloh screen printed Pyrex and images of Renaissance paintings on these pieces and sold them for hundreds of dollars. Later, Abloh would cop dozens of dead stock Ralph Lauren rugby flannels on wholesale for about $40 and screen printed the graphic Pyrex 23 on the back. The pieces would go on to sell for over $500. The stated goal of Pyrex vision was to represent the importance of youth culture. 
by centering the designs around a garment that most youth would recognize from gym class. Virgil's ideas could be clearly geared around the importance of the now, especially having support from friends like ASAP Rocky, Kanye, and placements at multiple retail stores across the globe. He closed the company down about a year later, as he did not intend for it to be a commercial enterprise, but an artistic experiment. However, I'd think several cease and desist letters from companies such as Pyrex and Ralph Lauren may have played a major role in the closure of the brand. Pyrex vision marked Virgil's first noticeable mark as an independent designer. During this time, Ben Trill had been surfacing around the underground fashion scene. A DJ and art collective, later turned into a streetwear brand, founded by a group of creatives including Ablo, Justin Saunders, Matthew Williams, and Heron Preston. It was here Virgil's DJ alias, Flat White, was spawned and has stuck around ever since. From the super teched out launching of an app, to dropping merchandise, collaborating with other brands and artists, Ben Trill has always seemed to be as head of its time. With its cult-like following on Tumblr, the brand quickly became a relevant name in streetwear culture. But as the brand grew and changed from its vision over time, there were reports that some members of the group just couldn't see eye to eye anymore, which led to the closing of a national distribution deal with PacSun. Finally, the brand was put to rest when ASAP Rocky dissed Ben Trill on his single, Multiply, for reportedly not paying homage to its roots. I ain't really fucking with that Ben Trill. Swear them niggas booty like tip drill. Nah, I ain't really into throwing shots. But these motherfuckers better give me my props or the pot. There were reports the next morning after the release of the song that fans were trying to sell Ben Trill related items on multiple Facebook buy, sell, and trade pages. Soon memes surfaced on the web as well. It seemed as if the shots were probably thrown at other members of the collective, as Virgil and Rocky were always seen kicking it. In 2013, Virgil launched Off-White, his first serious attempt at breaking into the high fashion industry. When describing what Off-White was to fashion critics and investors, he defined Off-White as the gray area between black and white. Off-White took the fashion industry by storm, and by 2014, the brand launched a woman's line as well. In an interview, Virgil described Off-White as the first luxury brand built entirely off social media. I work on the street, literally, like phone in hand. I feel like Off-White might be one of the truly first sort of like luxury brands that's been just built from social media. This was possible due to support from influencers who carried their own following, such as Lucas Sabat, Kanye West, ASAP Brocky, and Ian Connor. The unique growth of this brand marked a shift in the fashion industry and thrusted streetwear into the high fashion luxury category. Virgil's designs brought a new way of thinking into fashion, branding his clothes with the cross pattern typically seen at a work site in quotation marks. Off-White's first noticeable pieces were screen printed hoodies, tees, varsity jackets, and denim. In 2015, Virgil was the only American finalist for the prestigious LVMH Awards, which recognized young fashion designers for their work. In just a few years, Off-White became one of the premier luxury fashion brands in the world. Through Off-White, Virgil has had a direct impact on pop culture, observed through how often he and his brand are referenced in modern music. The name for Off-White was actually given to Virgil from ASAP 12V, as he recalls here in an interview with Breakfast Club. How much, yep. how much, how much influence did ASAP Mob have <laughs> on hip hop, or just the culture? Because I even heard the Twelve, we came up with uh, the the name of Virgil's clothing line. Yeah. I was like, nah, you make the off white and the crack in the pot. You know, I said you make the off white and the crack in the pot, and then he was like, oh. They ran with it, you feel me? Wow. As of today, Off-White is one of the best-selling brands in the industry and has collaborated with brands including Levi's, Montclair, Rimawa, Champion, and the American powerhouse, Nike. In 2016, Nike approached Ablo about doing a collab, which involved him redesigning 10 of the best-selling Nike sneakers. Eight different Nikes, one pair of Jordans, and one pair of Converse. Admittedly, Ablo was hesitant to take the job, calling it potential career suicide, but eventually he did under the circumstances that he would not change more than 3% of the shoe. When referring to the shoes, Ablo said, it's larger than design culture. These 10 shoes have broken barriers in performance and style. To me, they're on the same level as the sculpture of David or the Mona Lisa. This collaboration proved to be extremely successful, launching in the fall of 2017, as each pair resold for thousands of dollars on the aftermarket. Through the 10 collaboration's success, Virgil was in the center stage for the rest of the fashion world to witness. Virgil went on to design exclusive fitness garments for Serena Williams, as well as other Nike Times off-white pieces. This collaboration would continue to break down barriers and open doors for what was next in Virgil's career. 
With the announcement of Kim Jones leaving Louis Vuitton after its groundbreaking collaboration with Supreme in early 2017, there was speculation of Virgil taking on the position due to his close mentorship with Kim Jones. On March 26, 2018, Virgil uploaded a photo on IG of a vintage Louis Vuitton trunk that caused the fashion world to go crazy. At the same time, Louis Vuitton, the world's largest fashion house, announced that Virgil would be preceding Kim Jones as the creative director for the men's ready-to-wear line. This announcement was historic as it marked the first time in history that an African American was the creative director for Louis Vuitton. Virgil debuted his first collection in June 2018 during Paris Fashion Week. The historic show featured artists like Kid Cudi, Playboy Cardi, Devin Hines, and Steve Lacey walking the runway. Ablo had his mentor, Kanye, sitting front row during the show. After they shared an iconic hug that embodied the emotion and struggle of what it took and how many barriers had to be broken for someone like Virgil Ablo to become the creative director for Louis Vuitton. Later in an interview, Ablo credited Kanye for him being in the position he was in, saying that Kanye had to crawl so I could run. In an interview with Zane Lowe later that year, Ye revealed that he felt bad. He felt that he was supposed to be appointed to that position. He went on to say, I was the Louis Vuitton Don. People still call me the Louis Vuitton Don when I'm walking down the street. Kanye continued to comment about Virgil's show, saying, If I didn't go, then who was I? He ran that touchdown in for all of us. Because there was a time when we were all crazy. Since Virgil has taken over, Louis Vuitton's ready-to-wear collection has dominated the men's high-fashion luxury market. As Virgil was taking over the fashion industry, he would also exercise his interest in contemporary art. In 2018, Ablo collaborated with Japanese artist Takashi Murakami at the Gagosian Gallery and Kai Kai Kiki Gallery in Tokyo. More recently in 2019, Virgil held a solo exhibition titled Figure of Speech at the Chicago Museum of Contemporary Art. This exhibit displays a mid-career analysis of Ablo's conceptualizations in fashion, art, and music. The exhibit was shown in various museums throughout the country and was turned into a book titled Figures of Speech. Despite being heavily influenced by classic bands like Guns N' Roses, Nirvana, and Hip Hop, Virgil never really saw himself making music necessarily. But in early 2018, Ablo released his first EP titled Orange with Boys Noise, an experimental record that dove into undiscovered techno and tribal depths. Furthermore, with the success of constantly working on DJing, he's gone from playing high school parties to becoming a household name and began to get booked constantly for shows and festivals like Tomorrowland, Coachella, and Camp Flognaud, to name a few. He even opened for Travis Scott's Bird Eyes View Tour in 2017. As mentioned earlier, over the years, both as part of his position at Donda and personal projects, Virgil has overseen and art directed many high profile albums, including Kanye's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, Yeezus, Good Music's Cruel Summer, Kid Cudi's Wizard, Big Sean's Finally Famous, ASAP Rocky's Long Live ASAP, Lil Wayne's I Am Not a Human Being 2, and Lil Uzi Vert's Love Is Rage 2, as well as many other albums. In 2013, Virgil co-directed ASAP Rocky's music video for Fashion Killer, which featured Rihanna and cameo scenes from The Mob. Many fans of the song have stated that the video is one of the best they've ever seen. Fast forward to 2017, and Virgil's directing Lil Uzi Vert's smash hit, EXO Tour Life. In an interview with Fader, Virgil stated that his project with Uzi was his return to directing videos again. Virgil goes on to talk about Uzi saying, These covers are a prequel to an in-depth creative back and forth using all of our different assets. He believed in me and I believed in him. And it's us doing this crash of things that are in our own head. Which has later led to Virgil launching the Off-Way International Rap Video Production Studio in March of 2020. The company debuted its first official project, music video for Pop Smoke and Quavo's collaboration, Shake the Room, directed by Virgil. Virgil has also had many personal projects removed from his brand, including collaborations with Moet, Evian, Ikea, Baccarat, and Chrome Hearts, just to name a few. I don't think Ablo's legacy and influence on fashion will be fully appreciated and understood for years to come. It's not very often a single man can change an entire industry, but that is exactly what Virgil has done. Ablo's appointment to Louis Vuitton exhibits how the world of high fashion takes streetwear seriously now. This can be seen as the dawn of a new era in fashion. Although Virgil's works far exceed fashion and extend into design, contemporary art, and music. Most importantly, Virgil has used his platform to engage and uplift other designers and young creatives like Samuel Ross, Aaron Preston, Lucas Sabat, Ev Bravado, and Bloody Osiris, just to name a few. 
Virgil has made it clear that he intends to show other young, aspiring creatives that the door is open to design fashion beyond the runway. Virgil's career plays out like a story in which hard work, perseverance, and originality can break down any barrier. Who knows what's next in Virgil's career, but one thing is for certain, and that is Virgil will go down in fashion history as one of the most important designers of our time. Thank you for watching this episode of Uncommonly Cultured. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for more content such as Uncommon Radio and Uncommon Print, follow us on Instagram at The Uncommon Mag. Thank you for the support. Much love. The Uncommon Magazine.